Hello everybody, Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and here's another video in my series called How to Make Small Talk. You can find the whole playlist on YouTube, of course. Today I want to talk to you about a really great technique for getting yourself out of awkward situations. And I'm going to give you a bunch of examples of situations you can use this in and, in fact, things that you can say in those situations to help you, but you don't just need to say the ones that I've said, you can use them as ideas to inspire your own. Now, when I was a kid, I remember loving the story of the Emperor's New Clothes, that ancient legend where the Emperor's hoodwinked into paying a corrupt tailor in gold. The tailor tells him, I'm going to stitch you a beautiful garment out of gold thread, and it's gonna be a magical garment because no one will be able to see it who is stupid. And of course, the tailor takes the gold and brings him nothing as a garment and dresses the emperor in nothing. Uh, he goes to his first minister and the first minister says, well, I can't see it and I'm not stupid. He doesn't want to look stupid. So he doesn't tell the emperor that he's wearing nothing. He says, wow, it's very wonderful. And by this point, the Emperor is getting a little bit hot under the collar. The first minister says that, and uh, he he doesn't want to seem like a fool himself, so he doesn't mention the fact that um, he can't see the garment. And this goes on. The next advisor, the next one, this whole court, no one is willing to admit that the emperor is wearing nothing in case they appear stupid. And what a great tale of the woes, the the foolishness of conformity it is. They take the emperor in a chariot down the street and all the people, of course, have heard that he's going to be wearing a wonderful garment, but no one who's stupid will be able to see it. No one wants to appear like a fool. So they all pretend to see it and remark to one another that how wonderful it looks. And of course, it takes an innocent child to point out the elephant in the room, which is that the emperor has no clothes. So. This technique has often been called pointing out the elephant in the room, not pointing out the emperor in the room, I should add, although that would be quite funny. And I, I remember all these teen movies that we used to watch growing up, like American Pie and things like that. And um, they, they have all these situations where people do things in them that are stupid just because they want to conform. And I, I think um, they get swayed into it despite their better judgment and we find that those characters so sympathetic because we see something in ourselves. But oftentimes you can get in situations that are quite awkward where all it takes is for someone to point out whatever is making the situation awkward to actually make it better. So I remember just recently I was listening to a podcast with an expert in giving speeches and he said one thing he always does if he starts to talk, if there's a funny smell in the room, if something's buzzing, if something's going on next door, anything that might take people's bandwidth up, like say, it's kind of like having too many applications open in your computer, you know, no one's pointed it out. So everyone's part of their consciousness is distracted from the conversation with the buzzing sound or with whatever it is that no one really wants to point out. So, I mean, a, a funny thing that could happen is someone could say something that could be taken as an innuendo and everyone just goes silent and looks at each other and then they have to awkwardly go on as if nothing has been said just because no one fancies being the immature one who goes, ha ha, that's what she said and less on that later. Well, <laughs> we'll see. So, you can break the tension by just being honest and say, I mean, in, in one of ours, our one of the previous videos I talked about even pointing out when it seems like someone's bored or not really enjoying the conversation, maybe we should change the subject. But it's great in situations for, for example, you try and tell a joke and the joke doesn't land. Like I like to say, well, that went down like a lead balloon. Or obviously the, the classic one is tough crowd. You know, you can point out the tension or um, you can break the tension by acknowledging it and it helps to move the conversation along. And um, if you forget what you're about to say, actually I can go, hmm, let me think for a moment, or I forgot what I was gonna say, give me a second, or maybe we can circle back to that. You 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 tell me your thing. But um, if if you've 
forgotten their name or you, you suspect that they've forgotten your name, you can say something like, uh, it's funny, I find that when I meet someone, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to say next. And we don't always take in people's names when we first meet each other. Um, by the way, I'm Anthony. Um, and you could, you could, or whatever, you're, you, you don't have to tell them you're Anthony, by the way. You can, you can tell them your own name. Um, <laughs> if you don't know the answer to a question, you can just say, hmm, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Um, if someone asks you about something expecting, that's happened before, they, they, they ask you about something expecting you to know more about it, and you could just say, like, I don't know, actually, like, how could we find out? That's, that's interesting as well, because then you're bringing them into a sort of act, interaction where oh then yeah, we can we can explore this together if you feel a bit nervous uh, you don't need to say oh i'm feeling a bit nervous or i'm feeling a bit anxious unless you know the person but we can say you know these gatherings could be a bit weird when you first meet people or you don't know anyone you know sometimes you have to think about something to say you could go further it's funny when you it's funny when we get trapped in these interview conversations you know where are you from what do you do and like every every um conversation just ends up like us with us hating ourselves you know i'm, I'm improvising if i was because i'm speaking to the camera but when i'm faced with a real person in a real situation i find it quite easy to drop into being more natural and very myself and because hardly anyone is uh, i notice that it has huge power because people are actually looking to you for social cues just the way that you look to your environment for social cues. Well, the more you kind of practice, the more you get into these situations, you find that if you're willing to lead in the, in the interaction, people very often will follow you along because you're taking a pressure off them. So I can say things like, you, like, like what I said about, it's funny when we get into these interview conversations and then segue into see if I can find about, out about something more interesting, like what they're really interested in about and speaking about or something something a little bit outlandish and not like one of these typical topics. So, uh, as I said, you know, the, the good old fashioned, that's what she said. I personally prefer the classic, which is, um, I bet you say that to all the boys. Like that, that's, that, that's like the, the, the more classy version of that's what she said. I bet you say that to all the boys or all the girls. Uh, you might need to be careful who and when you said it to it. Of course, uh, the very old fashioned one is said the actress to the bishop. Uh, and those are really good. I mean, point um, because they crack the formality of an interaction and make people feel like they can just be a bit more natural and a bit more like they're like around their friends, around people they know, if you treat them a bit more familiar. If you treat people more familiar and less formal, you kind of give them permission to relax a little bit. It's not obviously not appropriate in every context, but it's appropriate in many contexts, especially like parties or even work events that are in work work, you know. So um, I guess I had a good experience of this once. I was taking the train and some some a woman came on the train and sat in front of me and she was like sipping wine out of a, uh, one of those thermos that you usually use for tea or coffee and like she's she's older than me but i kind of teased her playfully and flirted with her a bit just because well <laughs> that's just the kind of person i am and i was just having some banter with her and things like that and um she was speaking about one of her friends who she brought up on the phone to speak to me i can't even remember why now um but i no, that's right but i i just basically took the phone off her and like started teasing her friend and, and flirting with her just to create a bit of drama a bit of a, it wasn't a scene but like just just in a, not in an inappropriate way just in a funny joking way and it was just really funny and um but after i got off the phone we were speaking and i said to the woman um oh have you got a picture of your of you with your friend and she gave me a like a weird look like uh, i can't even can't even emulate it but um uh, it, it struck me because I was like, wow, is that, you know, did I, did I go over the line or did I say something inappropriate? I just thought uh, I'd asked her for a selfie. And if I hadn't um, come into my confidence and did what I did, which was to point out the elephant in the room, I might have gone away from that interaction thinking I'd bro broken some decorum or less 
confident of my ability to present myself, to represent myself to others. Now, the great thing is I just said to her, well, you know, I only want to see it if it's not weird. If it's weird, I don't want to see it. And uh, I didn't say it in that tone of voice, but I, I did say it um, to which she uh, responded, oh, it's just I'm not a really great fan of pictures of myself and I don't like pictures of myself. So um, she it, it was it was her issue about being self-conscious about showing me a picture and I could have misread that situation if I didn't ask. As it so happened, she took out her phone after she clarified why she didn't want to show me one and showed me a picture of the two of them together. So that was quite a nice um, experience and it shows you the value of saying what's on your mind and bring your authenticity to the situation. If something's going out uh, unsaid, you can take the risk of bringing it into focus because it might help the other person, it might break the tension. Obviously there might be some situations where you don't want to, uh, if you think that the other person might be nervous about it. For example, if you think the other person is nervous, you know, it might not to be so great to shine out a light on it and say, you look nervous by the way, can work sometimes. And um, I'm wondering if, hey, I'm wondering if you're feeling a bit nervous, is there anything I could do for you? Uh, it might make someone feel more self-conscious. Just, you just need to be able to gauge the situation accurately. So it might be better to focus on your own feelings, not uh, sort of use pointing out the elephant in the room to point out a flaw with someone else. You might want to be prepared to riff on the topic regarding the elephant in the room that you're pointing out um, because you, you need to go somewhere. So you can watch the second video in the series which suggests how you can take a topic and add a comment and then add a comment again, that will help you. And the third video in this series also talks about using anecdotes. So you can tie, you can tie what you've said into an anecdote. I think I've got an example in my ebook, How to Make Small Talk. There's, yeah, here it is. You can get it on Kindle if you fancy it. Um, so the context is seeing that someone else is feeling self-conscious. So you could point out the elephant in the room, not shining a spot spotlight on them by saying, I get nervous at these gatherings sometimes, and then say, it's interesting how, you know, we're <laughs> a lot of us get self-conscious and we're all just as self-conscious as one another. But even though we're coming from the same place, we kind of worry what other people think of us and they might find that understanding. At that point, the speaker, you you as the speaker, you can wait to see if the other person is keen to take it on from there and keep commenting on their experience, on their own experience, or if they don't chime in, you know, you can tell a story about it. Like once I was in a party once, or one time I was self-conscious and this happened. Anyway, if you find these videos useful, feel free to share them. Uh, the You can find the whole playlist on YouTube. And until next time, be yourself. Don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.